so close. All right, so the engine bay is probably looking a little bit different uh, to maybe the last time you saw it. I had to order new pipes. So this pipe and this pipe were broken on the mount on the motor that I got. So I had to order new ones of those. Now, you might be asking, and, and please leave a comment um, on what you think I should be running, but you might be asking why I haven't put a bigger pipe in or like the custom pipes like the the gsl run so reasons are you know turnaround time like they generally got a six to eight turn um six to eight week turnaround time for those types of pipes so i just don't have that time and two i mean this is how it come from factory so uh, yes i've got the g turbo on it and i'll get it tuned but again i'm not it's not going to be a ridiculous tune i'm not chasing massive horsepower here i'm not chasing any stupid ridiculous numbers i want it to be like what i had with the 45 i just want a nice safe tune that's got a bit of power a bit of torque uh that's why i went back to standard injectors again and so when i want to put new injectors in i just kept them standard right so i unless you've got unless you make a good argument for me in the comments uh i'm probably going to stick to the, the the factory intake pipes um because I'm just not chasing massive power. So anyway, uh, so I had to buy new ones of that from um, from Toyota. And I tell you what, anyone who can anyone who can 3D print these, you've probably got a market there because just those two pipes were like 540 bucks. So anyway, um, what it is cool is though the pipes actually got like a rubber. This bit here is um, rubber. So whilst that's all plastic, that bit there's rubber that's built into it so but i mean you can still get away with it with a silicon joiner but anyway morning so it's my birthday today um you won't you won't know until it comes out which will come out in a couple of weeks but yeah i was hoping this weekend to get everything all sorted and get it fired up and that'd be a nice little birthday present uh, so i've had brenton from myers automotive here this morning good mate of mine uh and used his scan tool to code up the injectors and after we did that he goes so can we fire it up and i'm like well, i reckon we probably can and after probably about i don't know an hour and a half it's still not fired up so unlike what i did on the eh where the thing fired up first go and it was just magic there was yeah i we didn't record it and I'm glad I didn't record it because we were soul searching a lot. So I'll give you an update of where we're up to. <clears throat> now, wiring wise, <laughs> I made I made I made two errors. Two errors on this one that I didn't make on the EH, but that's okay because we're all human. The first one was I looked at the wiring diagram and it says that the start trigger wire is a black red or a black white and so i chose the black red because it was the biggest one and it was black white so i had to reopen up this one here uh pull that through hook up the right one and i've now got crank which is good it's so that one was i've just got to retape all that up but that's okay the only thing, other one that i was missing is i thought i picked up the ignition feed so this one is an ignition fuse that goes to the ECU. So without it, the ECU doesn't work. Uh, so what I've had to do is I've had to just hot wire a little wire over here that I know to an ignition feed, and then I'll resort out that one later on. Uh, so yeah, so that's a little bit of temporary wiring that I had going. Now the problem is, and I've just rung Hagen about it as well, and he seems to think that there might be something going on with the ECU. So this is what we've got. Everything all clicks and makes night noises. It wants to fire, and then it doesn't. Right? So we're close. We're so close. So we've gone through and it's got fuel, so we've cracked all the injectors. It's got fuel there. Um, we initially thought maybe the primer pump had not worked, but we're getting diesel, so that's the main thing. Um, it sounds good, like, you know, it sounds like it wants to fire on that. 
the only thing that's not doing is yeah that initial part where it gets everything seems to be fine and then what we think might be so we've done an immobilizer delete on it but there might have been something missed i don't know so what i'm going to do i'm going to rip the ecu out now i'm going to send it up to hagen uh, at off track concepts and uh, he'll plug it into his vdj 105 see if it works and if it works well then we know that's not that and i can keep hunting but if it doesn't work well then we've got an issue with the ecu so anyway it's <laughs> it's a shame we, we got so close to firing it up so anyway um i'm going to keep going on the exhaust and we'll finish that off put the exhaust last piece of the exhaust in now you have seen from a couple of episodes ago when i was up at off track concepts where i had the um the front piece on the jig so that's that was all done finished all that off um and you were seeing the time lapse um finished all that off so that's all bolted up to the turbo and that now and so what was left is the last little bit which goes over the back of the transfer case comes to here. Now, uh, what I originally had with the 1HZ is I had a three inch straight through exhaust. So came straight out of the turbo, literally straight down here. And where the muffler usually sits here, I just had uh, basically a muffler delete. So it was um, yeah, just a piece of three inch pipe that had a few little tiny little bends in it. Um, and then, yeah, it goes all the way out to the, to the back of the car. Now, uh, from off track, we get basically to the muffler and then we've got to put a muffler in. So I've just bought just a generic Lukey muffler. Um, it's actually a straight through muffler, but yeah, in, in any event, it's just a muffler. So I've got to put the muffler back in. But the cool thing was is that muffler delete pipe that I had from the existing exhaust system, I was able to chop it and use basically the back flange. So the back flange stays the same, cut a little piece out, which it was like the perfect little bend to get into the muffler, position the muffler up there, cut the front piece of pipe off, and that's the result. So, um, I was going to put another band, oh, sorry, another um, flange here, but I mean, that can all just go in as one piece. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked with how it's come out, to be honest. So I'm just gonna bolt this up now and uh, see how we go. A few moments later. Here it is, ECU's back from off track. Uh, now, Hagen assures me that it works in his 105, so in theory it should work in mine. So what, what had happened was, <clears throat> we've done an immobilizer delete on the ECU, and for some reason or other, the software just hasn't done it properly or done it something's worked out hasn't worked out so they've redone it via obds like by the onboard diagnostics and now it works so again in keeping with tradition with 
sandy and with the EH build and that, there's gonna be no cinematography tricks here. I'm literally opening this up right now to, um, to plug in and it's either gonna work or it's not. So let's go. Now I'm probably not even going to bolt it in properly because I just want to see if it works. Actually I should just bolt it, just bolt it in. Right? Just bolt it. Let's just see, hey? Now, I'm just gonna prime that up. Should have enough fuel in there. I was debating whether this thing's dodgy or not as well, like the fuel filter, like the primer. I guess there's one way to find out. Now, ECU's plugged in, I've got fuel. Everything else has stayed the same. So realistically, and now I've got a muffler on it, full exhaust system on as well, so it should start. Fingers crossed. Let's see if it starts now. Take a moment to soak this in, I think. Ha! That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Leave a comment below. What do you think? It's, it's, uh, it's actually really quiet. Like, 
with the muffler on it and everything like that now, it's actually really super quiet. So that muffler might have to go at some point. Anyway, uh, that's cool. No leaks. I haven't got water in or cooling in it at the moment, so it's literally just firing it up. And so it's, you can sell. If only we had smell vision, you could um, you could you can smell the how new the engine is because yeah, and all that unburnt diesel in there. We were priming it the other day, but that's cool. All right. So I'm still buzzing from the first fire up. Uh, the only issue that I had uh, was the alternator wasn't charging and that's because I missed one wire. So of all that wiring, everything worked. I missed one ignition wire, which I was able to just pick up from the power outlet there. I found where the plug was. It was literally just, uh, yeah, 40 centimeters of wire hooked up within three minutes we're sorted, alternators charging. I'm just stoked. Anyway, uh, I just want to show you the other bits and pieces that I've got uh, from OTC. Uh, so this is the airbox. Now, uh, don't pick on the welding on the airbox and the uh, fan shroud because I welded them. So it's pretty cool. I was still able to, you know, basically build everything in the shed. Um, but yeah, uh, Hagen was good enough to allow me to sort of weld all these up. So he cut and folded it all and I just welded it all up. Um, the welding will be a lot better <laughs> when, <laughs> if you bought one from OTC yourself. But anyway, I, I still think it's still pretty good, but yeah. The, the welding Nazis out there will probably say that it's crap, but I still like it. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a design where that runs the 79 series air filter. So I can just buy an air filter off the, off the shelf. Uh, and basically they're three pieces and they wedge together and all the seal is around the factory seal. So I don't have to worry about this sealing as much because all the factory seal is there. Uh, and then it just goes into the intake and that. The other cool parts about it are, you probably can't, you, you won't definitely won't be able to see it. But down in there, I've got a little um, airline fitting that I can fit up to. Now he runs his uh, diff breathers through there. What I'm gonna do is because this is my home is gonna be for the air compressor for the lockers. I'm actually gonna run the filter. I'll put a fitting on the front where the filter's meant to be and I'll run that into that air fitting there. So I don't have to worry about the, uh, the intake of the compressor filling up with mud. The other thing that I did is because I used this power outlet, so this is the factory power outlet, which usually mounts about here. I've actually just drilled and um, bolted it to uh, the airbox. Uh, and that's where I picked up my ignition wire for the alternator that was missing. So um, yeah, that was pretty handy. And then obviously I've got my driver units mounted there. And my original plan was going to put the compressor here, but then that would foul up on the, on the strut for the bonnet. So I'll just put it in that little gap front there uh, but yeah that's that's nicely and firmly mounted there I've got the vacuum canister hidden away underneath there as well you can't see it but that's all mounted and hidden away underneath there and then that's what that that vacuum line comes up for the brake booster um, so that was a nice little neat sort of addition there but yeah there's a bit going on in this little area um, but I actually quite like how that's been mounted there now in terms of looking at everything else as you can see there's really not much clearance with anything. You know, like we're talking tight tolerances with everything. So what I've done is I've made up a custom clutch line with a banjo bolt here, so that, yeah, we don't, we're basically minimizing the amount of um, stick out that there is here. Uh, and so that then just runs down um, to the slave cylinder. Uh, the factory 79 lines would have been handy here as well because they're hosed to there and then they're hard line up to that but I haven't got them so I've just run um, just normal heater hose. The only alteration I've got to do this because this one here I ran underneath the cooler which is fine because it's got plenty of clearance. The only place that it doesn't have clearance is here. It's probably, yeah, it's probably a little tight there. 
So what I'm gonna do on the weekend, I'm just gonna chop that off there. I'll put a little bit of hard line between there and there, just underneath the cooler. And then I can just run hose to there and then hose from underneath there and around there. So uh, yeah, that's how I've sort of run the heater hose and that there. Aircon, I still haven't hooked up the aircon yet uh, because I've got a new line from compressor to here, but to go into the TX valve, I need to make up some form of fitting. And so I'm probably gonna have to cut off the original 80 series fitting here and braze it onto the 79 line. So I'm not worried about that for the purposes of getting the build ready and be able to drive it in a couple of weeks. Um, I'll deal with that another day. The only other alteration that I've got to do under here on the weekend is when I originally fitted all this up, I didn't have the cooler in the right spot and everything like that. So where I've made this fuse box, it's sort of rubbing. But what I'm going to do, I've got enough room in there to chop the end of that off, remount it, uh, and then that'll, I'll, I'll have plenty of clearance then. So um, I've just got to take the cooler off, take the hose off, cut that, remount, redrill, and then put it all back together. But that's not an overly big job. Uh, and then, yeah, just, I mean, the last little bit of wiring now is just changing over the sediment plug to the 79 one. Everything else under here is pretty much done now. Um, so that was the final, enough we got to it, but yeah, that's the final um, brake sort of line fit up. I had, on the 80 series, I had just a, a Ryko um, catch can uh, and I had it mounted over the other side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it. I'm just going to make up a mount for it. But I'm just going to mount it in there. About. It's about there. Um, so that'll be a nice little spot for it there. And then, as you can see, it's got easy access to the... Uh, to the PCV valve and back to the intake and that as well. So um, that'll be a little neat little job over the weekend. I don't know if I'll probably record that. I don't know if I'll record that. I think that's, that's pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, tonight uh, I am going to be finishing off inside. So I've got a pedal to mount. Uh, I've got a cruise control module to um, install. I've got a taco module to install. So what this does is it takes the digital readout that I've got from the ECU, converts it into a manual readout so that I can wire it up to the original dash. Got to do those two and then basically inside here is done. Uh, the last little thing is that's where I've hidden the OBD plug. Uh, so the onboard diagnostic plug. So just drilled, or sorry, did just cut a little um, hole out of the glove box. And then obviously, cause that all wires in there to the, um, yeah, so the main loom and everything like that. So I've just put a plug on that and plug on that. And yeah, that's a nice little hidden spot away for the OBD plug. So yeah. So now I'll probably wrap up that episode. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just wanted to sort of show you where I'm sort of up to, which is uh, pretty close to finishing actually. Uh, I've got to bleed brakes, I've got a bleed clutch, power steering, put coolant in, all those you know additive bits and pieces and that, and then I'll be able to sort of take it for a test spin. Uh, but the next job is on the weekend, so probably the next episode for you guys is going to be turning that 80 series bonnet into a 79 series bonnet. So I've got a new 79 skin and I've got to cut that up. So that'll be the last sort of job. We'll fit that up and then we'll go for a test drive. And yeah, I'm pretty much on track. So this is what week five, cause I've got, yeah, I've got two weekends to go. So I've got two weekends to do that. So barring any massive issues, which I don't want to talk too loudly about, uh, we should get it done in seven weeks, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, thanks for tuning in. If you, as I said, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, leave a comment and tell me what you think.
like pretty stoked. I, I mean, I'm still buzzing around from having that started up. Let you know what? Let's just one more time. Hang on. I've got to hook the bloody battery back up again. But let's just let's just hear it for one more time, yeah. Just because we can. Ready? Ready? <laughs> Catch you guys.